Graceway Bible Church. This is a guided tour through 11 different interactive scenes going from the creation of our world to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why don't you come on in and join us and go through the tour. Is it loud enough? This camera probably picks up better. You're gonna, you're gonna see it. And welcome. This evening we're going to travel back together in time to view the historic events that surrounded the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. As we begin to take this journey, we first need to ask ourselves, why did we need a Savior? Why did Jesus Christ need to die on the cross? And for that, we need to go back and start at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, one day. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the expanse and separated the waters which were below the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and there was morning, a second day. Then God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation plants yielding seed, and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit after their kind with seed in them. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind, 
fucking got a song that was good. Then God said, let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth and the open expanse of the heavens. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after their kind. And it was so. Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God saw that all that he had made and behold, it was very good. Satan, who was once one of God's archangels, had rebelled against God and was cast out of heaven. He spoke to Eve one day in the garden as a serpent. Did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? You will not surely die. God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. you were naked. Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. What is this that you have done? The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Sin had now entered the world, and would be transferred from generation to generation. Adam and Eve's disobedience to God had now brought death to the human race. But God already had a plan to rescue us. His plan was to send his only son to be sacrificed on the cross for the sins of you and me. He would provide a savior to save us from our sins. Once Adam and Eve had been cast out of the garden, the world became more and more sinful. The Bible says that God saw that the wickedness of man was great and that even the thoughts of every intention of his heart were only evil all the time. He was so pained, he wanted to destroy all of mankind. But through his loving grace, he provided a way to save us from the worldwide destruction of the flood that he would soon be bringing. I'm going to ask now that we follow along and go see how Noah is coming along with his ark. Has Noah lost his mind? Why is he building this boat? Yes, and where does he expect to float it? Noah, you have visitors from town again. Friends, welcome! Have you come to help with the building of the ark? Of course not. We just want to know why you're building it. God has said that he will bring floodwaters down onto the earth to destroy it and all of mankind as judgment for their wickedness. He who takes refuge in this ark shall be saved. Flood the earth. Impossible! Nothing is impossible for our creator God. He has promised to flood. And it will come. Yes. Do you remember him? Who he is? How can you doubt the word of our Lord? He is a God of promises that you can rest your life upon. So won't you please believe and come. Join us in our work. 
Believe what? I see no God. All I see is what I and other men have created. Yes, I agree, and I don't see any woman nearby. <laughs> Friends, I beg of you, search your hearts. Search <laughs> no. for our Lord, which you have forsaken. No, no. It's not too late. No. He's crazy. <laughs> Noah and his family thought that building this ark was foolishness. Many people today think of the word of Christ as foolishness. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says that the cross of Christ is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of the word of God. Many people did perish in that flood, even though God had given man 120 years to repent. You see, that's the number of years it took Noah to build this ark. Yet no one turned to him. Only Noah and his family were saved as they chose to take refuge in the ark. You see, the ark is like the symbol of the crucified Savior in whom we can also take refuge. We're going to now be moving outside to the hills of Bethlehem. So I encourage you, if you brought a coat or anything and want to put that on, that's fine. Um, just allow myself to come up with you. Shalom. Shalom, Alekum. Come close, gather around. The night is cold and our fire is warm. Shepherds, whose flocks are these you're watching this evening? These, these are the flocks of the temple. Some will be chosen, the perfect ones, to be sacrificed by the temple priests. Something must die to pay for our sins. Isn't it a shame it has to be an innocent lamb? Yes, it is, Shepherd. But remember long ago, God's promise to provide the perfect sacrifice, a Savior. One who would offer himself on the cross for our sins. One whom the Lord would cause the sins of us all to fall. What about him, Shepherd? Have you been looking for this Messiah? You know, it's, it's been so long since the prophets foretold of him. I, I long for his salvation, but my faith, it's so weak. Oh, what's up? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town of David. A Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you that you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men on whom his favor rests. Messiah has been born? The, the Messiah has been born. What the prophets have said has come true. God keeps his promises, every one of them. Come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go see the Messiah. We're going to follow the shepherds. What's that? Be careful. Coming this way. We're okay, we're, if we stay together, we'll be safe. We'll see the Bethlehem. It's very busy this evening. But we're okay. We're looking for an end. Just follow the shepherds. Come closer, everyone will be able to fit in the town here. It's getting more and more crowded in Bethlehem as we speak. Shepherd, is this the only inn around? 
I think so, but let me find out. Shalom! <laughs> Shalom! Oh, oh, oh. I hope you have other accommodations. I have no room. Bethlehem has become quite a busy little town, and I must tend to my guests. I have no room. It's okay. oh, oh. We're, we're not here for room. We're actually here because the Messiah has been born. Have you seen him? Messiah? Yeah. You're mad. Go to your wineskins. We haven't been drinking. <laughs> wait, uh, wait. Do you know maybe uh, uh, a, a baby being born tonight? Maybe a woman uh, carrying a baby or... I know of no... Yes, yes. Okay. A young couple. She was with child. I sent her to the stables because I have no room. That's okay. Which way did the stable and keep her? Yes, Shepard. Over there. This way? Thank yes. you. Thank so, you. Um, we're going to follow the shepherd again. I think he's going to leave the stables. Okay. We're getting closer. The stables this way? Follow the path. The path. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Looks like there's some animals here, so if you could come around here, this might be where the stable is. Just come all the way around. Look close, everyone, you have to see this. This is a sight. Oh, can you imagine giving birth in a place like this? Shalom. Shalom. Come close. Come and see. Look at our precious baby born this night. His name is Jesus. It is a Christ child, just as the angels announced to us. Come on. We've got to tell everyone about the Messiah. Let's go. How exciting that God's sovereign plan was being carried out here in a humble stable amongst donkey and sheep. The Son of God entered the world as a tiny baby, just as told by the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will be with child, and she will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Joseph and Mary, as they've been instructed by the angel, gave the, name, the, ba gave the baby the name Jesus. For he would save his people from the sins by taking those sins as punishment on the cross. There was so much rejoicing that night in Bethlehem. The shepherds went about telling everyone the wonderful news. But not everyone was so thrilled about the birth of the Christ child. There was a king in this territory that was very threatened by his birth. I'm going to ask that we continue on our journey and be careful now as we enter the throne room of the evil King Herod. I am Herod, king of all Judea. And who are you? What is your business here? O oh, king, may you live forever. We are wise men from the east. We have spent our lives reading the ancient writings and reading the heavens for signs. We saw an unusual star when it rose in the east. Our research into the ancient writings has led us to the conclusion that 
that a king has been born in this very region, as foretold by Isaiah the prophet. If this is the king of the Jews, born as the prophets predicted, then he is the Son of God, the Savior, and the Messiah. We've come to worship him and give him gifts. I am the king of the Jews. There is no other king but Harry. Are you here to steal my throne? Anyone who listens to these men will be severely punished. Listen to me. Listen to me, Magi. Why don't you leave Jerusalem and go to Bethlehem in search of this child? And when you find him, report back to me so that I too may go and worship him. Now go. Herod could be quite generous to the individual who brings me word that where this child may be found. I must find that child. King Herod had no intention of worshiping the Christ child. He was afraid of him. He was so afraid of him, in fact, that he had all the male children, two years old and younger, murdered in the hopes that he would also murder Jesus. But God protected his son, and Jesus grew to become a man and began the ministry of proclaiming the good news about himself and the kingdom of God. He is the Savior that Isaiah said would bring the good news to the poor, would bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom to the captives, and release the blind from darkness. I would like you to follow me now as we go and watch what a day in the life of Jesus' ministry was like. Come this way. I have to go find him. I have to go and find Jesus so he can come here and heal her. No, Jairus, you can't. You'll lose your seat in the synagogue. You can't go. They'll, they'll lose everything if they see you asking him for help. Listen, listen. We'll lose her if I don't ask him for help. Jesus is her only hope. I have to go find him. Oh. Jesus. My lord, my daughter Sarah is sick and at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her so she can get made well and live. Tell me, what is your name? My name is Jairus. I'm a leader here in our local synagogue. And you come to me? I believe that only you can heal her. She's so sick and so young. Please come. I will. Take me to her. It's this way. <laughs> oh, Jairus, my lord, your daughter, she died. Don't bother the teacher any longer. Jesus, please, my daughter, please. Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she shall be made well. Place the sweat. <laughs> Stop your weeping, for the child has not died, but is only asleep. Is this some joke? Who does he think he is? How dare you? We know it's always asleep. So that you might believe in me, I say, little girl, arise. <laughs> No, he's the Messiah. The, the Messiah. Messiah! During Jesus' earthly ministry, he performed many such miracles. He raised the dead, he healed the blind, he made the lame to walk. He even fed thousands of people with just a few fish and a handful of loaves. All this he did to demonstrate his divine nature and his love for all people. You see, it was love that led Jesus to the cross. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever would believe upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. As we begin to walk to our crucifixion, I want you to ask, think, and ponder what it was like for Jesus to walk to the cross that day. Imagine the pain he felt at the beating at the hands of Roman soldiers. Imagine the pain and extreme humiliation that he felt being rejected by those he had created and now come to save. But Jesus could have asked God to save him at any time or he could have rescued himself. 
but he chose to endure this all for you and me. Come this way, please. and yielded up his spirit. Immediately, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and there was an earth. Truly, he was the Son of God! to obey the will of his father. He humbled himself to obedience to the point of death, even the death of a cross. He is who Isaiah said was crushed for our iniquities, was wounded for our transgressions. 
The chastisement upon him is what brought us peace, and by his wounds we are healed. You see, it should have been you and me on that cross. The Bible says that there is no other name, and all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But this was his choice for death for our sins. But Jesus had authority over death, and he said, no one, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down on my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I also have the authority to take it back up again. I'm going to ask that you follow us inside now to see what happens next on our journey. Mary, look, the stone's been rolled away. What is happening here? Where have they taken our Lord? Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Now go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. We must quickly tell the others Jesus is risen, risen just as he said. Jesus did rise again just as he had promised, and Jesus is coming again just as he promised. Behold, I am coming soon. Come. And receive me as your Savior. Come, all who are thirsty, and all who are hungry, and let them take the free gift of eternal life. Jesus is coming again according to God's sovereign plan. What you have witnessed here this evening is not just a story. It is the true meaning behind Christmas. It is the truth about God sending the Savior of the world to be offered on a cross and sacrifice for the sins of you and me. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven by which man may be saved. And Jesus said, Truly I say unto you, no one comes to the Father except through me. Those who come to Jesus in repentance and faith and ask for forgiveness of their sins will be saved from God's right judgment against sin. You see, salvation and eternal life are a free gift offered only through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask that we bow our heads to pray. And if you have never asked Christ to be your Savior and you would like to do so tonight, please feel free to follow along in a prayer like this. Let's bow and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you so much for the precious gift of eternal life. I want to th say that I'm just so sorry. I know I have sinned against you. Please come into my life and be my Savior and Lord. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son and that he died on the cross for me. I believe that he rose again and that he now lives in heaven. Thank you so much for coming and saving me and giving me eternal life. I ask that I live the rest of my life for you. This I pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to be concluding our tour, and I would just like to say that if you just ask Jesus to be your Savior this evening, and you would like more information, we have at the end of the pews as we leave, there's a basket with an envelope, and please feel free to take one of those. Um, we're going to conclude the, um, this evening, this tour. I'm going to come down to the side. I'm going to ask that we exit, starting with the last pew. And it's just really such a treat to have so many people come out and enjoy it. So um, I want to thank you for doing that. This is where I'm going to leave you as your tour guide. And I'm going to leave you in the hands of Anna. She will give you some further instructions to finish up. But I just want to again thank you. We hope that um, if you do not have a church that you currently have any um, that you're attending, feel free to join us here at Graceway. We have a lot of Christmas programs um, that are coming up there on the back of your program. Thank mm -hmm. you.